You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. <laughs> Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hi, this is Josh from There's Only One Elvis, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome Josh Freeman of There's Only One Elvis. And Josh has released his new six-track EP entitled The Balance of Everything. And the debut single off that album is Recoil. And the Balance of Everything EP is the follow-up to the debut album, High Right. And we're going to be talking to Josh about all this good stuff. So how you doing, man? And welcome to the podcast. Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate this. Not a problem. So you took a hobby of guitar and, and, and drum tracks and turned it into a project. When did you feel you wanted to create music and go further with the drum and guitar tracks? Uh, basically, I got to a point where I was starting to share little demos that I was doing uh, with my friends and stuff like that. And never really had no plan of taking it any further than that. But mm. basically the more feedback I got was more fuel to the fire. It was like the more I you know played it for friends and stuff. And they're like, man, this sounded really good. You know, it'd be cool if you had some, some bass and, you know, some vocals and stuff like that. And I was like, I'll just give it a shot. Like, you know, and it kind of took off from there. Were you on the edge though? Of like, are these guys and gals really serious about what you're telling me, or should I just go just? I'm just going and do it. Yeah, that was that was it. And you, it's kind of hard with your friends because you know yeah. they want to be nice to you. You know, yeah. so you, you kind of take some of it with a grain of salt. But <laughs> some of them I've known for a very long time, and I trusted their opinion. You know, a lot, and that that helps when you can kind of have those people in your corner. You know, what's the growth you've seen from yourself personally? on this new EP, uh, The Balance of Everything, compared to the debut Pyrite? So I have one song, and it's the, the EP's not out yet, and uh, it'll be out April 7th, but there's one song on the EP that I purposely did not put out first uh, because I think it's the most musical thing I've done so far. It's, it's heavy. It's got a lot of musicality to it. It's kind of a long track, which I like to write longer songs because I am one guy. It just, you know makes sense to me i kind of get to do whatever i want but i don't it's it's a huge step forward um especially this one track now the all six songs have a certain kind of feel to them but there's one in particular uh that just blow to me it just kind of blows everything else out of the water and that's kind of what the ep is it's kind of stepping you into that last track um so i've always i've 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 had a pretty good ear, even with Pyrite, of like how to how to structure an album and like what song needs to go where. Uh, and I feel like I kind of nailed it on this EP. You know, man, a, a lot of people are doing exactly what you're doing. They're just a one man band. That's it, and and they create great music. But you know, at the end of the day, are they really going to take this out on on, on the road? Possibly, because I mean, some of this should be out on the road. Uh, yeah, I get I get asked that quite regularly <laughs> um and uh because i have another band it's a hardcore band hardcore slash death metal band called modown um mm -hmm. and that even they asked me they're like why don't you kind of make this a whole other like live band and pretty much the only answer is if i added more people one it would drive me crazy trying to teach everyone everything <laughs> and two i just once you start adding people you lose all that freedom that's true like you you lose all that of like, I don't have anyone to answer to, you know, cause I don't want to, if I did that, I wouldn't want it to be like a dictatorship, you know, yeah. I'd want input because now I'm bringing those people in, but you also give up a lot of that freedom that, that makes it special. You know, does it seem like a breath of fresh air for you though, to, to have this, this project compared to having your death metal, metal band and everything? 
Oh yeah, for sure. Cause this is, um, I mean, I, if you, if you listen to the EP or even some of my singles and stuff like that, like I like to put, there's jazz breaks, there's horn sections, there's little bits of electronic stuff here and there. And I just, I like working with that stuff, you know, and it doesn't necessarily fit in a lot of projects. Um, so to me, this is like, I can throw that in there and make it work however I want it to, you know? I got to listen to this and, and the third track kind of blew me away because like you said, it's a slower track than compared to the first two that that's right in your face. It's like, Whoa, I never saw this coming because you, you, yeah. you think those two tracks are going to be heavy and you think, well, everything else is going to be heavy, but it's a slower rim of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 even with pyrite, like I, 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 I'm very meticulous about how I put these together. Because I, you know, uh, if I didn't do that, I might as well just release a bunch of singles. You know, it, it wouldn't, to me, it's not an EP or an album. It's, it's just a collection of singles at that point. But if you, if you pay attention to how you want it laid out, you know, in the long run, then to me, it makes it, that's what makes it an album or an EP or, or something a little bit bigger than that. So how excited are you to have this EP going to be coming out in this library of music for you, man, because this is the, the second one in this vault of, of music for you. How, how, how excited are you? This one I'm really excited about. Um, Pyrite was kind of, a um, it was almost like, uh, like challenging myself, like, Hey, can I get an album done? You know? And then I, I got it. I got hard copies. I got it out. It was done. It was over with. And I was like, all right, whew, like I can breathe a little bit. Um, and then like, you know, all the COVID stuff happens and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was just here writing demos the whole, it didn't bother me, not one bit, you know? Uh, but I had a bunch of stuff that I was kind of working on around the time that I was doing Pyrite uh, that I really just kind of honed in on. And I spent probably a year and a half uh, just kind of focusing just on these, these, I think it was actually eight originally. Um, and I cut two out cause they just didn't feel right, you know, with the other tracks. Uh, but yeah, I spent that year and a half just kind of just digging into these six tracks. So to me, this is much more of a, of a piece, you know, than Pyrite was. Pyrite was trying to get my footing and now I have my footing and I feel like this is kind of where I need to be, you know? So it, it took a year and a half to write and record this EP. Yeah. And I do everything in in this room right here <laughs> it's so amazing how things are now these days to 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 create an album i mean you don't have to go to a you know a six thousand dollar ten thousand dollar studio you know and or maybe more you know i don't know yeah oh well i mean for it to for it to be like good you know yeah. uh there's there's almost no end to the cost <laughs> uh, but you know i I don't know. I feel like I'm making good sounding music. Uh, it might not be mixed to everybody's, you know, specifications and what they like to hear, but this is as much a learning curve as it is a creative outlet. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd and I like to, I like to learn these things as much as be creative. So to me, it kind of, it, it scratches both itches. Do you think that you would have more albums or EPs out at this point, or are you just write a long schedule of coming out with more stuff? That's honestly one of the, like, I'd never wanted this to be um, a stressful thing. Cause I've, uh, I've been playing music live since I was 21 and I'm pushing 40 now. Um, and I've been playing guitar since I was 12 and it's, uh, it's, when you get into a live band scenario and not to, I'm not knocking being in a live band cause I love it, but it's a different thing. Oh yeah. Um, and, sure. and it's very regimented and you have to do these things and be at these places and all that stuff. This, if, if my solo project ever gets stressful, it's going to make me not want to do it. And so I'm basically like, I might take two, three weeks off and not touch anything or, or, or work on stuff with Modown or stuff like that. And then, when I come back to it, it's more refreshing. Yeah. You know, it's like a it's, podcaster. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I can take as much time off as I want and come back and it's all right here. 
and I can just throw myself back into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got to have that break, man. If you do, you know, if you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, eventually it's just going to be, God, this sucks. It's like, I don't want to do this. You just, you lose all passion for it. Yeah. You know, with this being a solo project, that's, this is my passion. I want it to continue to be my passion, you know? and I love the name of this band. There's only one Elvis. <laughs> I love the name of this band because it just, it fits. It's uh, cool. Yeah. I've kind of explained the name a few times, but um, basically it's a joke about how there's, there's only going to be one guy who could steal somebody else's music and make a living <laughs> off of it. So that's the original thing. But then someone else pointed out to me um, that there's only one, Elvis and it's only one like I'm the only guy so that kind of fits too so I've kind of adopted that one as well what led the track recoil to be the first song released off this EP man what was it about that for you that said I want this to be my first track off this album EP so recoil is um I don't somewhere in my adult life I had developed a bunch of irrational fears um and I'm not really sure where that came from <laughs> um and that was uh, that was the one I just I was working on it and I kept listening to it because I, I listen to my tracks nonstop when I'm in the mixing phase. Uh, and that one was the one that the lyrics came pretty quick and I had the vocal patterns down and I was like, this is this is my lead right here. Like, this is the one I got to get out, get off my chest and and run with it. Are these all brand new songs or songs that didn't make the debut album Pyrite or just left in the vault from you? A lot of them are kind of maybe their one riff that was around when I was working on Pyrite. And then I would basically either rework it Mm -hmm. or scratch it all together and just, you know, come in it fresh. Um, And that's that's probably I think there's about four of them on there that just had like one little piece. And then I kind of reworked everything. Uh, There's a couple of them that were just completely while I was doing that, I had this inspiration and I just, boom, there was two, you know, two or three more tracks. All right, Josh, was there a track that you were working on for this EP that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to? Was there one that just kept changing? Yeah. Stratera. Stratera kept, that was one I would, I would kind of work and go back and rework and go back and rework and go back and rework. It's like every time I was listening to it while I was mixing or doing vocals, like it was, there was something that just like, I needed something else to be different in it. And that, that was, that was the one that really, I kind of had to like kind of stick, keep, keep going with. Cause I have a bad habit of like, I'll be in the middle of doing something. And if it's not quite right, I'll throw it in a folder and just kind of leave it there. Um, So with Stratera, I knew I was close and I didn't want to just dump it in a folder and leave it. I had to kind of keep keep working at that one. So that that was that was the one that really kind of I put the screws to a little bit. So Terra Man is the one I like a lot. I really yeah. like that song. I'm not knocking any of the songs that's on this out on this. EP. <laughs> but it's just that there's so much change on it, you know. And it's like, wow, this that, is something that grabs your attention. Yeah, that's that was. I kept going back and like, no, it needs to be. You know, that that's how that one wind up being so different is because I kept adding and changing little bits here and there. So any track standing out more to you than any right now on the CP? I, I know these are your babies. I understand it. But do you have? Oh, any no. Of- Look, you- I have. have- yeah, I have. I will always have favorites and least favorites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but no, uh, Sun Massacre off of this one is is by far my favorite on the EP. And I know I shouldn't, I'm trying to plug a whole EP and I shouldn't be, you know, touting one song, but that one to me um, is probably my favorite one so far. Probably my favorite song I've written so far. Now you said there was two songs that got cut off this EP. Are we going to see these on another EP or full link down the road or are they just going to be one-off singles? Uh, to be honest with you, I have about 15 tracks that are just kind of in the vault. Mm. Um Great. I know they're they're either you know one two minute clips or they're like whole things that I've kind of worked, uh, yep. but I'm not sure what to do with them. And I could I could wake up tomorrow and be like, nope, I'm deleting all of them and starting over. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's there's a good chance that maybe parts of them will show up on the next release. Um, 
and I'll probably do a couple singles before I really get into that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, who knows? <laughs> That's why I love doing this. Cause I could, I could just scratch all 15 of them and start yeah. over. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to. You have nobody to say, we can't do yeah. this. No, yeah. you, you, I'll do what I want. Yeah. Whatever I do, I won't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's me. Every, every day I come in here. I know you're, you went the EP route this time and I know a mm-hmm. lot of people are doing that nowadays. Why go the EP route and just, or just wait just to do a full, another full length or would you just want to get something out there to see if, what people's thoughts were? Well, basically, cause it took me so long to record this stuff. Cause I kind of hammered on it. Uh, I just kept, you know, I wanted it to be better than pyrite and that's mm. why I spent so much time on it. Um, but honestly, I went to, I went to band camp and you know, I was like, what do you guys want to do? Do you want singles? Do you want an EP? Cause do you want a full length? Cause if it's a full length, it might be another year before it comes out, mm. you know, and my followers, uh, it, whether it be band camp or anywhere, you know, like they're, they support me and they don't have to. And, you know, in that regard, I, sh- I, I, this is just as much their stuff as is mine when it gets to that point. So, and most of them sounded off EP, you know, get a few songs out and that gives me time to work on new stuff. And, you know, it's, it's more or less just, it, it's kind of fan service, but at the same time, like it saves me a lot of stress too, because I'm not overworking myself trying to get a whole other album done. Yeah. Yeah, you can so, just put stuff out there to give people a little bite of it and then say. Yeah, uh, I, I could put six out now. I could put six out next year. You know, I could I could do a run of singles, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and I, like I said, all of this is learning, you know. I, I the, the music industry is going to tell you like, oh, drop singles, do do this, do that, you know, do all these things. But at the end, just ask the people who buy your music. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Who did the artwork for this EP? Uh, I, I actually did this one. I, I've okay. done everything head, head, like head to toes on this one. I did the um, the album artwork. I've done the CD artwork, the back cover. Uh, all of this has been in house this time. So, all right, Josh, what do you hope everyone takes away while listening to these new songs? Or just there's only one Elvis music in general. What do you hope they get from it, man? Um. Uh, just keep an open mind. I like to throw a lot of stuff genre wise together. Um, and, and whether you listen to it for the lyrics or for the riffs, just, I hope you enjoy it. That's it. That's literally, if you if you got one track that you're just like, that was a good one. I have done my job, you know, yeah. like that's, yeah. that's all it takes for me. I know that you have a lot of music when you're growing up and I know still today you have a lot of music that you, you, you go to, but do you still have a, a go-to album or a song that you find yourself going back to listening to from time to time that you, you just cannot kick out and will not kick out. Oh, this is, this is my favorite thing in the entire world. I'm so glad you asked me this. Um, <laughs> I, I from Meshuggah will forever be that one thing. Cause it's one track. It's 25 mm. minutes long, roughly, and it's perfect. Like, uh, that is, I can go and listen to that once a week for the rest of my life. Dude, that reminds me so much of the No FX uh, EP for one song called The Decline. Yeah. Just it's like, anything, anything that is just like, it's there, it's perfect, it's done, it's yeah. over with. You know, yeah. I'm good. It's like four songs in the one. <laughs> Yeah, but oh, it's so dude. Good. I used to get so lost in that I that, that I album from the show. It just like every change happens. It's like a whole new song, yeah. And you forget where you're at, and then by like then it's over with, and you're like, yeah. "Wow, that was amazing." If you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, what band and show would it be? Oh wow. Uh, Man, honestly, just because they're they're probably the closest local band, like local big band, because I'm in Alabama, uh, I would love to play Macedon. Mm. It put me like I would be I feel like I would be just good enough <laughs> to, to be like an extra guitar player at Macedon. <laughs> 
All right, folks, I know I said this earlier, but there's only one Elvis will drop their new EP this April, The Balance of Everything. And you definitely want to check out the debut single off that EP called Recoil. And Josh, my man, how can folks stay in touch with you by all this stuff? Anything and everything that goes on with there is only one Elvis. And I love saying that. How can they do that? Um, I am everywhere. Everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, Bandcamp is a big one for me. Uh, but then you got all the streaming stuff. I am I'm everywhere. So if you just want to Google, there's only one Elvis. It's going to take you to me. And I will be the one that's answering messages. I will respond to your post, whatever. It's all me. I will have all these links in this interview. So that way folks can go find every single link possible. Yes. Oh, uh, and until the album comes out, if you pre-order on Bandcamp, you get recoil right out of the gate. Oh, cool. And I know I said earlier that it's already been released. I apologize. It has not. It releases in April. Yes. So, <laughs> so don't get don't get hurt because I said, well, he doesn't say it's already released, but like, Here, I apologize. It has not released. Hey, if you want to come yell at me, uh, then uh, that's just more chance for me to talk to you. That's all it is. <laughs> hey, Josh, before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Oh, absolutely. You got it. Hi, this is Josh from There's Only One Elvis, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please get out check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link. You definitely want to get out and subscribe to that because we've hit 1K. We've hit actually over 1K, and I want to thank each and every single one of you beautiful people who have done that for me. Thank you so much, honestly. Thank you. And get out and check out There Is Only One Elvis and their EP coming out in April called The Balance of Everything. Debut single off that out. EP is Recoil. And go out and check out Pyrite too. Pick up that full length album. I and got and copies of it right here, ready to ship out. There you go. There you go. So check that out. And Josh, man, thank you for doing the interview, man. Thank you for reaching out and wanting to be on the podcast. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. And I hope to be back sooner than later. You're more than welcome to, my friend. <laughs> You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.